so right now we're working on the uh, on these fillets and fairings and uh, a fillet here and a fairing here so what's the difference fillet when you have the connection between the <clears throat> one vertical surface and another, although the fuselage here is not quite vertical, uh, you end up with a hard right angle. And on an airplane or <clears throat> other machine designed to slide through the atmosphere, either in the ocean or through the air, I mean, our atmosphere is, you know, often described as an as an ocean. It's just um, not an ocean of water. It's an it's an ocean of oxygen and uh, I don't know nitrogen. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> but it's an ocean. It's got currents. It's got you know. There's resistance uh, to any body that moves through it. And uh, ouch. And um, so anyway, I'm I'm going off out of out of my comfort zone as far as what I'm talking about. But so we have uh, fairings and fillets, and the idea is just to get it to look, um, you know, proper as if it were uh, a part that was made from typically aluminum, sometimes wood. So. As we work away at this, you know, we add filler, uh, we shape it with a little bit of water using our fingers, and then we um, shape it with the sandpaper and, and uh, smooth it out. And so I just typically I'll roll this either around a dowel or roll it up on itself. And we just want to brush at it. So we come, you know, here's our horizontal surface and up onto the fuselage. And you see, I don't want it to cover the seam here. This is actually on the aircraft itself, the the real world example. Um, you know, it stands out here from the fuselage. There is a lip because it is an added part. It's it's not part of the fuselage. It's it's an add-on after the fact, designed to smooth out this uh, transition from horizontal to vertical or from the horizontal plane of the <coughs> stabilizer to the surface of the fuselage. So you just want to just kind of brush at it like this until it's smooth and, and then really you can't quite tell what's happening until you brush away the dust. So you see we have a little bit more filler to add down here, right here. Um, our fillet needs more work and a little bit of correction here and there. Uh, here at the front end of our fin joint to the fuselage, and then we touch more filler and a little bit more shaping there. But as you wipe away the dust, you can then see. Perhaps you can maybe you can see it here at the back end here and and right here. And then we'll we'll need to use sandpaper to go back in and clean out this connection here. Uh, the elevator the the control surface here on the on the horizontal stabilizer um, would need to be able to flex to pivot up and down. So we'll have to clean this away, and we'll just use reference photographs to make sure we're getting that that look correct. But again, you want to stay off of your sandpaper seam. This will cut into either the wood or the fairing in a way you don't want, so you're just going to hold it off onto the back side here. And just kind of, again, you're just kind of brushing at it, and then every once in a while you'll come in and, you know, actually do some shaping. And what I do there is I'll just rotate it slightly so there's a, a push and twist. You see that? A little rotation. There. And again, that just helps, helps it. <coughs> To keep the, um, I apologize for my cold. Um, that just helps us to keep that fairing or fillet uh, looking proper.
not getting dug in on one side or the other, not getting you know overly cleaned out until we're cutting into the fin. We don't want to cut in. A little bit's okay, just a just a little. And then periodically what you'll do is you'll just sand all the way out. Again, to prevent there being a channel, you know, here at this seam or here at this one. You don't want to groove a channel into it into the wood or into the fairing that doesn't that doesn't belong. And you can use your sight lines. You can, you know, look, I can't really, with the fixed camera position, I can't show you what I mean, but you hold it up like a, like a pistol or like a, like a rifle and just sight down each of these uh, channels to make sure you've got them even so they are the same thickness to each other and so on. And then sand accordingly to make your adjustments. <coughs> you see how that, this is the brushing maneuver. And you do have to be able to see your work, and that's where the paintbrush, uh, a wide, uh, sort of heavy bristle brush. Uh, this is not real terrific, but it, it's doing the job here. It's the only clean brush I have at the moment that that I can apply. So but you can see that where there's areas that need to be worked out, and you just brush at them until they look smooth. And this is a, I want to say this is 220 grit, I believe. It's a 220 grit paper. This is an, um, a 3M product. It's a no load. So it tends to stay pretty clean. Now here, you can see I was probably working on a wet patch of the, uh, I hadn't waited long enough for the, uh, for the product to dry before I started working. And that's, that's where I got that from. That's filler that isn't quite dry. Uh, you know, patience is a big part of this thing, and sometimes even I, after all these years, will be impatient. And that's just not good. You, you just have to maintain patience. My concern was I had other obligations. I needed to be somewhere, and I thought I'd take a quick pass just before I left the house to see if it... And, it, and of course, that, that was a mistake. I should have just waited. No big deal. We just reapplied. Uh, we just reapplied the filler and left it the, you know, the appropriate hours and let it dry. We've had some dry weather here too, and that's what led me to think it might have been ready. We've had a Santa Ana conditions, which is just almost zero humidity relatively warm warm temperatures was almost I don't know it was 75 or almost 80. <coughs> My workspace in here gets a little warm during the if there's sunlight and so it was probably more like 85 in here and dry as a bone and I just thought that would have cured it a little faster than it but it didn't you know you know so again, we just waited and put some put a fresh application and just waited the usual span of time typically with this stuff if it's warm and dry the conditions are right it's about four hours maybe five and in typical conditions with normal humidity and temperatures especially at this time of year I would normally wait about you know 12 hours 24 hours let's let things cure overnight or if I'm in here in the morning and I'm applying this stuff I usually don't touch it until the sun's going down on normal conditions <coughs> again it's unseasonably warm even for us a couple of days uh, anyway so there you can see um, a little bit more of how I'm doing these fillets, and this is not difficult. This is easy, right? You just you just be patient. You know, you want to know what the look is that you're going for. You want to be patient and mindful in all pursuits, and this one is one of those. You're just going to apply the stuff carefully, keep keep it where you want it, and keep it away from where you don't. And you're just going to work uh, continuously until, or work at 
it repeatedly until you have the look you want. And if it's just not happening, you can sand it all the way. Uh, it's not <clears throat> hard to remove this stuff with sandpaper. I mean, you just want to be careful you're not taking away too much wood. Uh, the wood, you just have to be that much more careful with than the, than the filler. And at this point, I can't remake a horizontal stabilizer uh, and reinstall a new one. That, that just can't happen. This is installed. This is it. So keeping that in mind as you're working on this stuff is sort of important. But you can remove by sanding and you know, carefully working, you can sand away most of your fillets and fairings if you're not happy with your result. So, we've got a couple little areas here yet to work out. And again, the brush kind of reveals what you've got. with the 220 grit and we'll come in with something finer maybe a 320 and finally a 400 grit and then we're going to paint it um, with the sand and seal and we're just going to stay pretty much off the wood and, and just on the, the filler with this stuff and it'll glaze it'll uh, it'll give it a nice like it did over the paper it'll give it a nice glazing which it's the wheel. Uh, will help when you know solidify it, harden it, um, and also smooth out some of the little variables in it. This stuff is kind of self-leveling to a degree, so that'll smooth it out. And then again, the overall primer and sand uh, will take care of even more of some of the stuff. The little, but we want to get as much of that out as we can before we start laying on other products so um, little, little places we're going to hit with filler we're going to do some more sanding um, we're going to clean out these connections back here to delineate the uh, elevator separate kind of so that it would look as if they could operate here right now it looks like they'd be frozen by the fairings we don't want that and we'll straighten out this connection here. It's getting close, but more sanding will do it. Again, if you if you need to get into a straight corner, and this is what I use to clean up the edges. So I get a folded sandpaper without the radius in it. To clean up these edges in that corner, that part of the airplane here. Uh, the part of the fillet here at the nose of our at the nose of our tail <laughs> and then it, this is also good for cleaning up these edges which could, gets you back to where it looks like there is a, a piece of metal aluminum in this case that the fan is consisting of and so you see how you just use that to get a straight line and you do that both there and across the top of, of this fairing. The line gets lost a little bit here. Uh, I'm out of camera, anyway. I apologize if, if my angles aren't right and you're not seeing some of this on the camera. I'm, I'm trying to do that, but you know, I'm not very good at camera work. But anyway, you can, I guess maybe you can sort of see what I just did. Then we just kind of go along this line here. And I got a little, a little off line. Just 
brush with that again. There we go. Anyway, so that you, you get a sense of what we're doing. And <coughs> it's just working patiently and continuously until you have what you want. Only you can help you. And also, it's important, you know, to, to keep in mind that you're going to do the best work you can do. It, it may or may, I mean, it, it may or may not be perfect, and most likely it won't be. I'm not saying that this is. This could be overly large for, for the scale of the airplane. I'm, I think I'm close, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% certain that this is exactly the right size. And, and for me, I'm just trying to make myself happy. I want to rep replicate the look of that fairing. And so that's what we're working on now. The same with the wheels. You know, I didn't have anything to work with here other than the drawings I could find on the internet, images and photographs of the airplane in books and, and magazines. And um, so this is an approximation of of what these wheel fairings would have looked like, the best I could make, and I'm, I'm satisfied. You know, so just work, work carefully and, and continuously until you have the look you want, and um, you know, do the best you can. And each time, each each project, you get better at, it, at every aspect of it. And there are people way beyond my skill level. I'm not trying to say in any way, shape, or form that, that this is what I do is the right way or the only way or any of that crap. It's just, this is me. This is what I'm doing. And I'm just, I just want to share some of this information to people who, you know, might want to try, try it. And no matter what you build, no matter what the subject matter is, it's it's about applying the, the different techniques which 